Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, your educational background because you're very well educated. Um, I read about the your honors thesis that you wrote, which I found to be really interesting and has been published in this book that you have brought yes. here. So tell us, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, my thesis, well, it's a, it's, it's a revised version of my thesis that's been published in this book, which is the Rutledge Companion to Media, Sex and Sexuality, which is a, um, it's a textbook for university and master's students. Um, and so my, my chapter looks at the ways, well, firstly, I, I conducted qualitative research into female experiences in the Australian pornography industry. That's mm-hmm. what I did for my thesis when I was studying at the University of Melbourne in Australia. So how so, did you how did you do that research? Did you just interview a lot of girls? I actually had the girls write personal narratives. And the reason I did that was because with interviews you can even subconsciously ask like leading questions. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted to have the women speak about their experiences in their own words because there there is actually a lot of uh, research being done on the pornography industry, but very little that actually speaks to the performers themselves. Mm-hmm. And most of that research focuses on women, which is why I chose chose to look at female experiences. And the reason for that is that there is a canonical cultural narrative about women in the industry being victims. So there's that assumption that yes. women got into the industry because they're drug abused or they have some sort of childhood trauma. Or they have no other option. Exactly. Yeah. And there are, there are plenty of women in this industry who have chosen to be here, who are very well educated, who are here to express and explore their sexuality, or they're just business women. There's there's multiple reasons why somebody would, would enter the porn industry. And so... I decided to focus on women um, because I really wanted to to look at some of those arguments, but I also wanted to move away from um, that victim agent dichotomy. So, mm-hmm. um, if the media looks at uh, porn performers as generally victimised, there's also this this other story of the female agent, where there's that women in the industry are are completely empowered, powerful individuals that are paving the way, they're freedom fighters, which there are definitely women like that in the industry, but um, a lot of experiences fall somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to ask women to write personal narratives about their experiences in pornography and I didn't want to restrict what they they spoke about based on my questions or or my biases or what I want to hear. I wanted them to represent themselves because... Uh, people in this industry are experts on their own lives. Right. But a lot of the research done doesn't listen to their voices. It doesn't actually speak to them. So researchers, academics, feminists, um, journalists, a lot of the stuff that's put out about pornography just talks about it but doesn't talk – like says a lot about what they think people are doing in the industry, what they think people's experiences are, but we never hear the voices of the women or the men involved in the industry. So that's what I really wanted to do with this piece. Um, And there were a lot of interesting... There was a lot of information that that I garnered through that research. Um, And some of it was actually that this canonical narrative of victimisation actually constrains the way performers speak about themselves. So I never asked them, do you feel degraded? Do you feel victimised? I never asked them about about that. I just asked right. them to write about their experiences, which could have gone on in any direction. Right. But a lot of them started with, I don't feel degraded. You know, I'm, I'm not a victim. I came in here, be- I chose to be in here. So Because they're faced with that question so all often. All the time. All the time. That's all like the, the biggest time. question is like, do you feel... And I've, you know, obviously I find myself asking that question too, just because I know that so many listeners and just, you know, porn fans in general want to know that question because that's been you know, the argument against porn for as long as I can remember. Yeah, but notice um, there's actually a bit of sexism in this because it's always the women, women. that are seen oh as God. victims. Exactly. Exploited. The men, the men, no, the they're men kings, are stud- they're fine. Yeah, you they're never not victimized. See, yeah, you never see groups like rallying for the rights of men and mm-hmm. like, you know, these... Uh, one, uh, you know, <laughs> whenever people ask me that question, my first response is that's an inherently sexist question. Yes. And this is why. And you just articulated that so much better than I ever could have. But yeah, hundred percent, I agree with you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and and because this question about exploitation is asked so often, the that when you do start asking performers about their experiences, they feel like they're constantly having to 
to to counter argue against yeah. this question. So yeah. we we don't learn about the interesting things that are happening them about uh, to them in the industry. Their their interesting experiences because we're so entrenched in these debates about their victimization. Right. So I wanted to move beyond the victim agent divide and just kind of find out like you know, what what they liked, what they disliked, what their, you know, just, any, I mean, anything that they really wanted to tell me. 